there's a there's a subtle misunderstanding in that the Trump presidency, because of its alignment with the alt right, really put the Republicans in a in a tough situation because while George Bush and those before him had their issues and the conservative party, the Republicans have had their issues. I don't think you've had such a polarizing uh, person who's aligned officially aligned. I think the fact that Bannon's not there helps him because having Bannon in your circle of influence as the president puts you in a no win because Bannon's affiliated and in some ways has called himself Breitbart, his former magazine or now his current magazine the leader of the alt-right movement. And the alt-right movement is basically uh, white separatists, basically white nationalism, basically the Klan. And you can't defend that. And I think that's that was the position Trump was in when, um, you know, these things broke out from Charlottesville to everything else. So that, is, that uh, alignment with the alt-right works against him and worked against him. Now, Bannon being fired and him specifically pointing out, uh, you know, uh, the the nationalist organizations and being critical, that did help him, but it doesn't help the energy that's going around the world, and especially in America, uh, and this race thing is getting worse and worse, and it's, uh, it's still a big misunderstanding from a standpoint of, I think, on one side, I think the liberals, for the most part, understand it's, you know, when you say we all have to find common ground, there's no common ground if you got a, a clan, uh, if you have a, a robe on, or if you have a swastika, or if you are a, uh, if you truly believe that you are superior, and that everyone else is less than, and that it's your country, in an America that was really taken from other people. So, you know, us coming, uh, finding a common ground, can you really find a common ground in the alt-right movement that pushes hate, you know? Can you really find a common ground in that? No, so I think that messaging is wrong, and that's why people are defiant, and that's why I think even Jamel Hill and people like her have the courage to move forward because she knows she's right. She knows that this is not right. Now, and again, many people say, well, that's not the platform. I'm not going to disagree. I mean, I'm not going to disagree. She, I think she's lucky that ESPN gave her a pass because they could have very easily said, you're out of here because in the past, you know, there were precedents that set that up. So I wouldn't, you know, if that happened, I would not have been shocked because there are other people who were let go for, if not, uh, words so strong. If not, words so strong. Okay, so that's the Jamel Hill situation. In other headlines, trending news, did you see the Detroit the Detroit Lion fan who posted the racial uh, racist Snapchat message because this black couple didn't stand for the national anthem, and so this guy talk about bad judgment. Number one, bad judgment for saying saying anything and saying something offensive. Number two, you are a business owner, and in this day and age, you have a business. You are very vulnerable if you're saying some craziness on Twitter because they're going to find you. They're going to find you. And they found him. So basically, he um, got found out and <laughs> and ended up surrendering his season tickets. He created a racist Snapchat uh, pointing out these two, this black couple that didn't stand because of the national anthem. Now, he pointed that out, but then also said uh, the photo was captured, stupid niggers. What? Yes. Yes. So this basically killed him. Dead in the waters from a standpoint of the this Twitter, you know, the Twitter Wadi found out who he was and the news crew went to his house they found out who his friends are. They talked to people. He was avoiding it, avoiding it. And finally, sur surrendering his season tickets, the uh, two people who he was critical of, uh, they're also season ticket uh, owners, and they said they didn't feel comfortable 
being next to so close to someone. They did, they weren't aware it was going on. They they got home and saw all of the uh, aftermath. And um so wow, it's amazing. And again, I think this is also this also speaks to where we are as far as there's a lot of confusion and where we move forward. So, the couple, the wife uh, said she sits for the national anthem now because of the third verse that basically says that, you know, enslaved Africans will be captured and, and or killed. So this kind of came up when the Kaepernick protest started and someone examined the song and realized the song, which was originally a poem, really is not the best song to represent America. So what are we going to do about it? You know, now some will say, well, that's the third verse. It's not the first two verses. Um, leave it alone. It's a part of our tradition. Okay, does it make it right? And, and we are at a crucial point in America. And here's the thing. What Obama had that Trump has none of is Obama knew how to navigate fairly and consciously the waters with character and great communications and inclusiveness. Now, the irony is for America was it created a backlash because there are some people who don't want to hear it. There are some people who don't give a damn how articulate you are and how equal and fair you are. They don't give a damn. They feel threatened. I'm talking about white males, basically. Uh, they, they don't leave, leave America alone. You know, leave, leave us alone. They feel like they're losing grip on control, if you will. And so... It's interesting as great and uh, uh, as great a communicator Barack Obama was, there still was backlash. And so now we have Trump. Oh my goodness. So what do we do about these songs that are, you know, I don't stand anymore. I don't stand for the national anthem. I'm like, this is ridiculous. The songs, it's almost like discovering um, Christopher Columbus didn't discover America, but you're still praising Christopher Columbus for discovering America. He didn't discover America. So what do we do? Where do we go? You know, there are songs like that and situations where we have to kind of deal with that we're not really dealing with. And I don't think anyone's even started talking about, well, what are we going to do about the song for people who feel, you know, if that, if there, if the third verse of this song, which was adopted as our uh, national anthem for whatever reason is offensive because it talks about, killing enslaved people. What are we going to do about it? Is anybody answered, <laughs> asking that question? Uh, no, they are not. Um, and I actually had, um, man, I had a couple songs. I lost them. I didn't write them down. See, that's the thing. I get it. 50 plus. Go ahead and try to remember something. You try to remember something gone until of course I'm done with the podcast and then it will come. <laughs> it will come to me. So we did the, uh, okay, we did the Detroit Lions. We did Jamel Hill. Um, today, the um, other oh, story I thought was interesting. We'll just be brief, brief today. Sam Smith almost quit music. If you haven't seen singer Sam Smith lately, uh, who had this amazing first single, an amazing first album, he's lost quite a bit of weight. He's, he must be down like 100 or so pounds. I mean, he looks, actually looks ill, if you will. But uh, come come to find out, sure enough, his heartbreak almost drove him to quit music all over the place. He said he struggled to write music for his new album. He said there was a period when making the record that I was in a really bad place. I got dumped, which wasn't very nice. And um, he says, you know, he was really thinking about stopping the music. And, you know, it's... It, Life's such an interesting journey, like the heartbreak and getting dumped. I'm not a good person to talk to about because I think I insulated myself to a degree by really loving myself, really loving myself. I'm an only child. And so when people talk about heartbreak, I think I probably did insulate myself and in that I didn't put myself in a position where I gave people all that of me. You know what I mean? 
I don't think, and maybe we'll, maybe this will be uh, the topic for me today. You know, giving so much of yourself that if that person is no longer in your life, you are crushed and can't function. No, I don't think it's healthy. I think if you put yourself in that position, you're inviting heartbreak and you're not being fair to yourself. I think for whatever reason, we do this to ourselves, especially women, especially moms, especially wives. You, you know, especially moms, you love somebody so much and you call, and, and we say love, but I don't, is it love? That's the other question I had. I don't know. I don't know if it's love. So I guess what I'm trying to say is you should never put your, number one, you have to love yourself. You have to love yourself so much that if somebody is, if it looks like they're going to crush you or break your heart, then you got to go. You have to love yourself more than you love anybody else. You can't love anybody else more than you love yourself. Not your mama, not your kids, not your husband, not your wife. You have to love yourself first. That's number one, period. Because when you love yourself, you can see it coming when somebody is disingenuous, when they're lying to you, when they're when they're when they're not being truthful. Now, I'm not saying that you still can't get tricked. I'm just saying that you have it's like building a house. You built your house on solid foundation when you love yourself. So it doesn't mean a hurricane can't come by and blow it over. But those houses like the house we live in built in 1942 with two by fours and, you know, wood for real and concrete and bricks and mortar, you know, it takes a lot to move it. It ain't going to be no easy win. And that's what it is when you love yourself. So um, you got to love yourself Two, you got to take people, you know, if people show you who they are, believe them. If someone shows you who they are, believe them, you know, let them be who they say they're going to be. And if they are, Rock with it. And if you're not, don't. You know, it's not complex. We make it complex. If somebody says they're going to call you on Thursday at 3 o'clock and they don't call you, well, you just make a check mark. I, I call it my check mark system. You know, people, do they say what they say they're going to do? You know, are they are they honest? Do they have character? Do they follow through? If they do, then they pretty much are trustworthy. If they don't, then why would you put your trust in that? That mean you don't love them. You can love them. They can be they can be the biggest liars in the world. You can love them. You just don't put yourself in a position to be crushed by them, you know, to be hurt by them. And so, um, yeah. So, you know, the Sam Smith story. Like I said, here's a guy. You release your first album. It's probably one of the most successful singles and first successful projects of all time. You are. You go from zero to hero. You go from people not knowing who you are in the UK to being a household name and recognizable. But here you are crushed and sad and filled with heartbreak. So now it's your second album and you're thinking about quitting music because of heartbreak. What in the hell did you get into music for then? Why would you, you know what I'm saying? You're going to quit music. Aren't you a singer? Aren't you a musician? What's going on? What is really going on? You know what I mean? You were thinking about quitting music because of heartbreak. Well, what do you, aren't you a singer? Isn't that your profession? So you would give up the thing that you dreamed of that you had this amazing success for because somebody broke your heart. You might need to quit music. You know, you might need to quit music. If that, if that is not, if if you need to get yourself together, I'm not mad at you. Because obviously something's wrong. We just really think about this. And I think that's the kind of society we kind of in, like a lot of the f- celebrities and the famous people, they have this go on and we kind of go, we, we empathize, but what's really going on? We out here working, dreaming of trying to do this and that, and then these people have everything? And you're talking about quitting? Mm-mm. Love yourself first. All right, I'm going to wrap it up there. I'm sorry I didn't scare you. Hope I hope I'm not uh 
offending anybody. If I did, I'm sorry. It's, it's my take. It's my take. It's my take on the mark. Uh, 